So when it comes to lab tests for hair loss, it's not really possible to give you a one size fits all answer. You have to break it down in terms of the type of hair loss as well as the person's sex. So if you're a male with androgenetic alopecia, the diagnosis will usually be pretty straightforward. The doctor won't generally have to order any blood tests to confirm that diagnosis. But what about DHT? I can hear you say in the comments. Well, no, DHT levels in men with androgenetic alopecia are generally within normal values. Not only that, but on average, they're not even higher than the general population. So DHT or any other androgen test is not generally necessary. A possible exception is if you want to check with your doctor before starting on finasteride. In that case, it's advisable to get your PSA tested. PSA stands for prostate specific antigen, and it's used as a screening test for prostate cancer. Because finasteride is known to lower PSA values, you want to get an accurate baseline estimate so that your healthcare provider will know how to interpret those future results accurately. Having said that, some men will choose to have their hormones tested before starting finasteride as well. Knowing one's normal androgen baseline, including testosterone, DHT, sex hormone binding globulin, and estradiol can be potentially helpful in the event of side effects or if there's no response to the treatment. These can also be potentially useful in men who got side effects from finasteride earlier, stopped the treatment, and now they want to try again. Then there's also some guys who will have their baseline DHT tested just to see how well finasteride eventually blocked it. I want to emphasize that all of this is usually at the patient's request. Most doctors won't recommend any blood work for younger men with AGA, whether they start treatment or not. Now, while blood tests are not necessary to diagnose AGA in men, that can potentially make a difference in terms of your eventual results, and that is vitamin D. There is some evidence that men with AGA tend to have lower levels of vitamin D. And for some of these men, correcting this deficiency can offer solid benefits in terms of regrowth. A value less than 30 nanomoles per liter is considered low, but if you're dealing with hair loss, it would be sensible to aim for a much higher value than that. Values up to 1 to 5 are generally considered safe. Lower than average vitamin D levels have also been found in men suffering with patchy hair loss, aka alopecia areata. Speaking of alopecia areata, this is another condition where blood tests aren't generally necessary. This kind of hair loss is so distinct that any person can spot it straight away, even without any kind of medical training. Having said that, doctors will sometimes order blood tests to rule out certain potential causes. These include autoimmune conditions like lupus, which can cause hair loss by triggering inflammation and immune attacks on the hair follicles. Blood tests like ANA, anti-nuclear antibodies, can help identify lupus or other autoimmune conditions. Sometimes doctors will also order thyroid function tests to screen for conditions like Hashimoto's or hyperthyroidism. We'll return to thyroid tests later on. Now, in contrast to men, women with androgenetic alopecia will generally require complete blood work. The reason being is that it's often difficult to distinguish this type of hair loss from telogen effluvium, which we'll come to shortly. The second reason is that a very common and easily identifiable problem will be low iron levels. You see, the hair follicles actually serve as a storage for ferritin, which is a protein that holds and releases iron as needed. And when the body is running low on iron for critical functions like producing red blood cells, it pulls ferritin from less vital areas, including the hair follicles. The gold standard for iron deficiency involves a bone marrow biopsy, which is highly invasive and an incredibly unpleasant procedure. A much more practical and less invasive test is a blood test for ferritin with low levels suggesting iron deficiency. Often the doctor will be able to determine the cause by looking at the patient's history. For example, if the person had a major surgery a few months prior, or if they're taking medication that's known to cause hair loss. But if that's not possible, then the doctor will typically order complete blood work. Comprehensive blood tests, such as complete blood count, CBC, can give the doctor a good idea about the patient's overall health and potential contributions to hair loss. A CBC evaluates red blood cell count 
hemoglobin, and other levels, which can help identify conditions like anemia. Levels of zinc and other trace minerals can also be checked to rule out a deficiency. Another possibility in this case involves thyroid function testing, as thyroid disorders are common in women with diffuse hair loss. Hyperthyroidism, for instance, can lead to dry, brittle hair and excessive shedding, or hyperthyroidism may cause thinning hair that appears limp and fine. Thyroid function tests typically include the following. TSH, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. Elevated levels suggest hypothyroidism, while suppressed levels indicate overactive thyroid. Free T3 and free T4. These hormones provide a clearer picture of thyroid activity and can confirm conditions like subclinical hypothyroidism. This refers to early stage thyroid dysfunction where symptoms aren't yet that obvious. Thyroid antibodies, e.g. anti-TPO, anti-thyroglobulin. These are essential for diagnosing autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which can contribute to chronic telogen effluvium or exacerbate existing androgenetic alopecia. So diagnosing and treating these thyroid imbalances can often reverse otherwise resistant cases of hair loss. Another test that might be useful for both men and women, just so you can rule it out, is the test for heavy metals. This is honestly quite an advanced topic and good reliable tests are hard to find. If you want us to make a video on heavy metals and hair loss, please leave a comment down below. And if enough people comment, we will make a video explaining heavy metals role in hair loss, what to test for, where to test and how to interpret those results. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe and leave a comment if you've got any questions or if you just want to leave a comment in general. And I'll see you in the next video.